Good day folks, Lucas Welsh here, and today we got a little bit of a video for you on online violins. Yeah. The do's, the don'ts, the why's, the where's, the when's, the how's. We're going to get into it all. Cheers. <music> All right, so I get this question all the time, you know, and they go, well, you know, like, why, why is there student instruments at like four or $500? That's where they're starting. That's your basic student instrument. Well, I'll tell you why, folks, okay? Um, it's because of literally the work that goes into them, okay? This is the thing. So, yeah, you can go and you can buy your Amazon specials, your Team U, Zephy, wherever you buy from. Um, it don't matter, okay? Will they work? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, will they work straight out of the box? 90% of the time, I'm going to say no. I'm just going to go out there and say it. No. Here's what's wrong, okay? A couple things going on with these units. Number one, first and foremost, first and foremost, these bad fellas up here, can you see how little they're actually contacting the hole? Like, I mean, I'll, I'll pull this one out here. It's maybe like, let's see, a third to half of the peg engagement. Okay? Is that going to stay in tune? No. Not even a little bit. So, can we fix them? Yeah, sure. We can make them fix. We can make them work. Okay? That's not a job your, your average, you know, do-it-yourselfer has the tools for. Okay? Because it doesn't take much for tools. But that right here represents about a $500 investment for good quality tools. Okay. Too little. I don't. Tell me about it. Okay. Things are expensive. That's why nobody's into it. All right. So. Say you get one. And you go. Like I did on this one. This one had the strings kind of laid out. And the bridge was all wrapped up in a nice little paper sleeve. Tucked under the tailpiece. Okay. So I thought, hey, I'm in luck. I'll be able to just pop that bridge up there and everything's going to be ducky lucky. Nuh uh Not the way that it was. So. Part two. This is the bridge. So I set it on there. I kind of rough locate it. And I look at, oh, that doesn't look too bad. Oh, boy, my pencil. You can't even see that. Hang on here. Okay, we're going to try and do this so that you can see. Number one, the fit, the fit of the bridge is terrible, okay? But be that as it may, okay, we're going to try and illustrate this so you can see, okay? When I take this pencil and I lay it on the fingerboard, it should... Bump up against the, the bridge. Here's a rough bridge that hasn't been cut. Okay. So once I'd have the feet measured out, I would go and I would make my marks. One on that side. One on that side. And you can see two little marks. Okay. And then I would take and I would make my profile. I'd actually go a little bit higher than these marks. Draw out my profile. Carve the top down to fit. And away we go. Let's see how this one does. All right. So we put it on there. We're going to get it lined up. Again, the fit is bad. The feet are not fit very well. Okay. We put my pencil down. Flatten it out. And boom. Can you see that? It just totally skates right over the bridge. Like, I can't make a mark on the bridge at all. So, right off the bat, this bridge, it's useless. Okay. We 
take a couple other measurements here. Yeah. Projection's reasonable. I looked at the sound post. The sound post is actually, you know, it's fit pretty reasonable. Let's just see if it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's located in a an approximate position like it should be. Okay, so here's here's the deal. I've got to go through, and i got to fit the pegs so that, number one, they're tunable and that they stay in tune. Because we all know there's nothing worse than a violin that slips out of tune constantly. It's the most frustrating thing out there. Guitar players, you won't understand. You just You just can't. Okay, until you've had to deal with a friction fit peg for your tuning, and, and it's slipping all the time, you just you just can't understand that frustration. Okay, but I do. I'm a teacher as well as a you know repair guy, Luther. Um, so the pegs have to be fit. I got to cut a whole new bridge. I got to carve a whole new bridge, and I mean those are those are time investments. Okay, now I don't care that this is a hundred and sixty dollar. Amazon, Teamu, Etsy special. I'm going to cut a bridge the same way I cut a bridge if this was a $10,000 violin. I'm going to make sure that the feet fit. No, I'm not going to maybe, you know, go to as much detail carving and, and beautification of this bridge because this violin is only going to sound as good as it's going to sound. Okay? Um, we're going to get this violin playable. And sound, we're going to adjust the sound post so that's in you know, a good enough position that everything sounds as good as this box can sound. All right. But what I'm trying to get out here is I'm, I'm going to put basically the same amount of time into this bridge as I am a fancy bridge for, for a high-end violin. Maybe a little less time, but still, it takes the time that it takes. You can't rush it, okay? It's just bad if you do. Bad. It's like over-clipping your toenails, you know? It hurts. So, you know, the other thing that we should check, because I've seen this, okay? I've seen this time and again with these cheaper quality violins. They're just not, they're just not built to the same standard. So what I want to check here is I got my trusty straight edge. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. And I hate to find this because this is, this is bad, Okay. This is bad. I, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what I mean. First, a little lesson, okay? There should be a little tickle of relief carved into the fingerboard of this violin. And relief meaning there should be a little dip in this violin. Slight. Slight little dip, okay? And that is so that you, you get proper playable proper intonation and your strings don't vibrate against the board if I put my finger down here it's it's kind of like a guitar in that respect right if the fretwork isn't right and if the relief isn't right um, you get buzzing same kind of an idea here if the relief isn't right your string can slap and buzz on the fingerboard beyond where your finger is down okay um, now this is something that I do with every cheap fiddle that comes in here because it's surprising how many have this problem okay now I'm not sure if I can illustrate this for you real well um uh, Houston we have a problem yeah I mean, watch this, watch this. It should stop at the nut. E. And it doesn't. Now, this is a worst case scenario. Okay. This I mean this is a brand new violin. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna name the name. This is a Nova NV45, okay? Um, I'm going to guess that this is a hardwood fingerboard, 
number one, numero uno. So not ebony. We're talking millimeters, millimeters, okay, that we're wrong here. But this this is not a this is not a little job anymore. Okay. So, you know, I'd have been I'd have charged this person forty bucks. I'd have charged them forty bucks to put a new basic bridge on and do the pegs. That's so what I would have charged them. Forty bucks. Uh to to reprofile a neck. Uh, it's worth more than the violin, of course. No, hands down. So now I get to make a very wonderful phone call to a nice lady who thought she was doing a good thing. Um, yeah, that's going to be a fun call. So there you go, folks. This is... Like you're 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 seeing it with me for the first time, okay? I I haven't looked at this fiddle ahead of time. I'm learning this the same time you are. Uh, I hate this. I hate seeing this. I hate having to call a customer now, and tell them I'm sorry. The fiddle you bought on eBay, Amazon, Team U, Etsy, wherever you bought it, uh, needs more work than it's worth to make it playable for a bad sounding fiddle saying that in a way that people feel good afterwards that's not really possible um so yeah so buyer beware okay these are the pitfalls with cheap instruments i've said it time and time again most of the time they're fine i can make them you know hold tune and play nice they don't sound good but whatever they'll get somebody started in this case, um, that fingerboard is so out of whack, and I can see the hump from here. I mean, I, I can just I can see the hump. There's a big there's a big hump right in the middle here. Uh, that's 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 a lot of work. That's just a lot of work. Okay. So, anyway, I hope you I hope you got something out of this. Uh, you know, it, it's a, this is a disappointing outcome, for sure, and it happens. It, it definitely happens. There's a reason that I reach for my straight edge and check that, because it's happened before. So, I, I mean, I understand if you've got, you know, a budget that you're working with and you're strapped, you trying to give your kid an opportunity, you know, um save a little bit of heartache and, and maybe just rent rent from a music shop that's you know reputable and going to give you a good thing until you can save up a little bit extra to to purchase something or go into a shop and purchase something that's you know second hand you can get some of these used instruments second hand i sell them all the time for for cheap okay so anyway cheers Thank you.